I normally devote my blog to technology tips for seniors, but this week I'd, I'd like to offer you some tips on staying healthy for years to come. By the end of this video, I'll share with you many general tips for maintaining a healthy lifestyle as you get older. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not offering specific medical advice. You should talk to your doctor for specific medical questions and concerns that you might have. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a technology, photography, and videography guru, and I'm here to make you a tech-savvy senior. As you age, your body and your life change, and so does what you need to do to stay healthy. Changes in your home life, your health, the medicine you take, uh, your income, even your sense of smell and taste may all affect your interest in healthy eating and physical activity. Healthy eating and regular physical activity are the keys to good aid health at any age. They may lower your risk for obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers, as well as other illnesses. They may even help you ward off depression and maintain good orthopedic health for your bones and joints. For my first tip, let's start with maintaining a healthy weight. As you age, you may notice changes in your body's makeup, which may lose muscle mass, for example, which in turn makes you more frail and prone to perhaps breaking bones if you fall. You may also burn fewer calories than you did when you were young, especially if you're not particularly physically active. To prevent weight gain, you may need to eat fewer calories than you did when you were younger. This means you have fewer calories to help you get the nutrients your body needs for energy. So, you need to eat foods that are high in nutrients, or what's known as nutrient-dense foods. Keeping a healthy weight is crucial, for what is a healthy weight varies from person to person. So you have to ask your healthcare provider about what a healthy weight is for you personally. Among older people, being underweight is of concern and may be related to not having enough to eat or not eating enough foods that are nutrient dense or possibly having an illness or disease. Being overweight is just as bad. Obesity is of concern as well as the extra weight your body carries around may increase your risk for heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and uh, other bone issues. Eating wisely and being physically active to preserve muscle and bone mass may help you maintain strength and stay healthy as you get older. My second tip is that eat, healthy eating is very important. When you get older, your body begins to need fewer calories, but you need just as many nutrients as you did when you were young. Nutrient-dense foods, like I mentioned earlier, pack a lot of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients that your body needs into a very small amount of actual calories. Older adults, as well as all Americans, frankly, are advised to eat from the rainbow of foods. That's an expression, the rainbow of foods. Rich in nutrients, for example, fruits and vegetables, whole grains like oatmeal, whole wheat bread and brown rice, fat-free or low-fat milk and cheese, or soy and rice milk, or, or good substitutes, that, um, that are fortified with vitamin D and calcium, as well as seafood, lean meats, not fat, poultry and eggs, as well as beans, nuts, and seeds. These are all good foods for you to get in the habit of eating because they are much better for you and give you the more nutrients that you need with generally less calories. Some foods may have a lot of calories but offer very few nutrients. Older adults should eat less of these foods. For example, sugar sweetened drinks like soda, orange juice, things like that, and desserts that have added sugars, foods made with a lot of butter or shortening, or other fats that are solid at room temperature. White bread is not good, white rice and pasta 
made from refined grains. These are all things that you should generally avoid. Even foods made with bleach flour because that is actually bad for you. Adults over the age of 50 have different dietary needs from those of younger adults. The government has provided information on how to eat better in its guide called What's on Your Plate? Smart Food Choices for Healthy Aging. This particular guide includes tips on nutrients, food groups, and grocery shopping, as well as uh, healthy sample menus that you can make the food yourself. I'm going to link to that online version of that guide. It's a PDF form in the comment section below, so you can download it yourself and see what the government says that you should be doing to help you eat healthier. Now, in consultation with your doctor, you should develop a healthy eating plan that works for your specific weight, budget, dietary needs, and medical condition. All this is making sense to you. Put Tech Savvy Senior in the comments below. My third tip is to develop a healthy eating plan, and I touched on this a little bit. Start by controlling the portion size. A portion is the amount of food you actually eat in one sitting. Many people eat a lot more food than they actually need, especially when you eat out or you're, or you're getting takeout food. So try some of these tips. Avoid eating food in front of the TV or computer or tablet screen or whatever, or your phone. You may not notice how much you're eating if you're actually distracted. Read the nutrition facts label on food and drink packages that you buy and see how many calories and how much fat are in a single serving size of that item of food. Additionally, know how much food comprises a single serving. You can be surprised to learn that even a small container of food contains several serving sizes, which in turn could cause you to eat more than you should if you just actually ate, say, this little package of food. Another tip that I would recommend that actually comes from Weight Watchers to help you control portion size is to use here the palm of your hand. You can get a size of meat, say, or a piece of fish, which is healthy, or skinless chicken, something like that, that's no bigger than the palm of your hand, you will be eating small. Now, obviously, we all have different hands. I have pretty big hands, so I don't do the entire part of my hand. I do the inner part. But the idea is if you kind of measure your food that way, even if you're not a bunch of a cook and you don't have measuring you know, spoons and different things, that's a good way to limit your portion size. Another trip, which I do myself, is I actually use smaller plates. We have large plates at home and I have smaller plates, like medium size, and then the very small saucers that a, like a coffee cup goes on. Well, I use the medium sized plate when I eat because as crazy as it sounds, after a while, you put less food. You actually put less food on your plate because you have a smaller plate and it looks fuller. Another silly thing that doesn't seem like a big deal but takes a while to get used to is simply stopping eating when you say, I had one plate of food. One bad thing I used to do and I had gained a lot of weight, actually, um, until this year when I started exercising. But one thing I used to do is I would eat until I was not hungry anymore. When you eat, it takes a while to start digesting the food, so you, and you don't feel that, that hunger in your stomach. So what I would usually end up doing is eating a plate of food and not being quite full yet. So I'd eat like another plate of food. And that was bad because I was actually eating double than what I should. By eat, stopping at one plate, and it took a while to get used to this, I was actually eating less because I had given my body a chance to digest and I would stop feeling full. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it really does work. It kind of trains your body into thinking that you've eaten more than you, you have. Just like looking at a smaller plate. I do this all the time. I, use an actual smaller plate so that it kind of looks like more food, right? Because a small plate with the same amount of food looks fuller than a, a big plate with the same amount of food. 
I mean, it's a silly thing, but it really works. After a while, you get used to eating less and you will eventually start to lose weight. I myself can test to this personally because I've been watching my diet and exercising since the beginning of this year, well, since about March. And this is currently August, so it's been about 22, 23 weeks, somewhere in there. And I've lost over 40 pounds myself by eliminating high calorie but low nutrient foods like junk foods, sugary foods like soda. I have to admit, I love drinking soda. I used to drink soda every day. But it's very bad for me. Cut that out. And these other tips, like the smaller plates and stuff, have really helped me to lose a lot of weight. In fact, if you went back and looked at one of the first two or three blog videos I did, you would see that I look a lot heavier than I do now because I have, in the last four or five months or whatever it is, lost over 40 pounds. Eating healthy meals can be easier when you plan ahead to make them enjoyable. Try the following tips to help you make a meal plan. Cook ahead and freeze portions the excess portions, I should say, uh, for days when you don't want to cook. You may have some leftovers the next day or two down the road. Keep frozen or canned vegetables, beans, and fruit on hand for a quick and healthy meal add-on or snack when you're really feeling hungry, like in between meals. If you're going to eat, at least eat something that's good for you, rather than salty or sugary snacks. You might also try rinsing canned foods uh, to get rid of the extra salt and preservatives that they use to keep it. That'll help you. Less salt is better. Also drain juice and syrup from canned fruit to remove any extra sugar. My fourth tip is to maintain physical activity and I can't stress this enough how important it is. Physical activity is good for you at any age. If you have never been active at all, start regular physical activity now can help them to improve your endurance, strength, balance, and your flexibility. Being active may help you live on your own for a much longer time and will also help keep you healthy. Now, being active can be hard if your mobility is limited, say you're in a, either a walker or a wheelchair, or if you have serious health problems, but you can find activities to meet your needs in cons consultation with your doctor. For example, Slowly raising your arms or legs may help you when done on a regular and repeated basis. Even if your mobility is limited, you should be able to do things like that, just to keep your body moving. Healthy older adults should do activities regularly, such as aerobic or endurance exercise, if you can, and activities to, which will strengthen your muscles, improve your balance, and increase joint flexibility. Any, uh, for any new physical activity you do, if you have not been active before, start slowly and then work up to your goal. To track your progress and stay motivated, keep a daily log of what you do and how long you do it. If you do this, you will notice that at first it's going to be hard, but over time you'll be able to do whatever this activity is for a longer period of time. Or, for example, if you go walking or running or something that you like to do, even if it's just walking around the block, at first you may only get part, halfway around the block. Then you'll get all the way around the block. Then maybe in a month or two or sometime later, you'll go be able to go two blocks and so forth. You'll be able, by tracking, you'll be able to see your progress and know that you're getting healthier. Many of the activities that you do can give you more than just one benefit. Water aerobics, for example, at the gym or in your pool can help you by uh, not only strengthening your muscles, but offer you aerobic benefits such as making your heart healthy. Yoga, for example, combines balance, flexibility, and strengthening. So choose whatever activity you like to do and stick with it because some physical activity, even a limited amount, is better than none at all. If you found the information in, I provided in this video useful, please like the video, comment below, Share it, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you would like more information on becoming a tech-savvy senior, or to see other videos and photos that I have, you can connect with me elsewhere outside of YouTube by looking for Jim Costa Films 
on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on the theater. I currently have over 4,000 videos on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check them out because I have many other Tech Savvy Senior blogs, videos to show you. I have news, I have sports, I have many, many years of work on there. Now, I also have a new Facebook group that's called Video Producers and Content Creators. So if you look for that on Facebook, you can connect there and join the group for even more pro tips and tricks.